In the last year, um, in my opinion, there have been two major advances. The first one is for the stroke treatment. Uh, stroke treatment, uh, of course, you know, the, the important study about thrombectomy, but um, there have been a, a big evolution in uh, material, in micro material. Mm -hmm. So now micro catheters um, are available uh, with uh, that uh, which uh, this type of micro catheter we can catheterize very distal vessels and uh, uh, do thrombectomy in a, a very difficult situation. And uh, this is a major, major advance. And I think that uh, is, uh, this uh, could be very important uh, consequences uh, in uh, health uh, policy, in uh, health uh, strategies. So is a really a uh, many uh, great, great advantage, especially um, and also regarding aspiration technique because aspiration could be performed very distally and it's the same, uh, the same big progress in this field. The other is, uh, of course, uh, the intranet small flow disruptor available for uh, at least uh, seven, eight years in France, but there is a new uh, new uh, devices uh, such as uh, Contour is similar to web that is like uh, um, surgical clip at the neck of the organism. And I think that the evolution, because of web, uh, Contour and other material artists and uh, so on, uh, could permit to, to change completely the approach uh, to this uh, um, uh, pathologies and uh, in my mind uh, in a few years, uh, the surgery is completely over. Okay. This is my personal, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, uh, uh, yes, provocative uh, uh, assumption, but I think that uh, so interventional neuroradiology has complete, almost completely replaced uh, the uh, endovascular surgery. It, it's interesting also, these new devices, do they lessen the danger of bleeding? Are they like stents that require you to use uh, um, DAPT afterwards or? Uh, many of my colleagues use the uh, DAPT in this uh, circumstance. Um, in my series, almost 200 uh, intranebral flow disruption, I never use the DAPT. I have the same strategy with coils, only heparin during the treatment. Uh, few aspirin in uh, selected cases, and I left my patient under a small dose of uh, aspirin, uh, 75 milligram per day, mm -hmm. nothing, uh, twice a day, morning and night, for one, uh, one month. If uh, there is not mm -hmm. a particular problem, uh, difficult vessels, or cardiac problems, and so on, and I think that it's a big advantage because uh, you don't take the risk of that for mm. a device which is completely intra and very small. Right, so the great advantage is it, it lessens bleeding risk immediately. Less than bleeding because one of the, uh, the most uh, severe complication of flow diverter stent is uh, due to uh, that with mm. the risk of energy before mm. and after. Many colleagues stop immediately after the procedure, but you have to consider that one week before the patient is under risk and they to remain under risk for at least 10 days. And during the procedure, if you have a, an aneurysm rupture, the hemorrhage is more important. So we take an additional and, in my mind, uh, useless risk. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see coming out in the future now? How, how, what's the next step? I don't know exactly. I think that the material will progress uh, for stroke, that's for sure, and also for uh, intra and every small flow disruption, and a big progress, progress will be the coatic stent. Mm -hmm. because it's uh, not uh, today, but maybe tomorrow, we could uh, avoid uh, that uh, when we put uh, a flow diverter stent in a vessel. 
for the moment the results are not uh, so contributive and we never stop mm. uh, even with the more recent uh, uh, stand for the stand we can't stop uh, uh, completely that or there is uh, some study with only one uh, um, monotherapy, but the monotherapy using clopidogrel or uh, they really cannot mm. stop, uh, not stop this drug, but only aspirin. And uh, the more dangerous and more powerful drugs uh, are, of course, uh, the, the mm. clopidogrel, the or whatever.